going to be by Carsten Aga, who's going to talk about a web-based, easy-to-use admin system for Ubuntu. Yes, this is true. And um, first, by way of introduction, I want to say that I am a software engineer uh, that was originally uh, trained as a theoretical physicist, and I also did some courses in computer science. But now I've been working with administrative uh, computer systems for the last 18 years. Uh, in my spare time, I volunteer as a local group coordinator for the Free Software Foundation Europe. Uh, but I am presently employed as a Python developer at Magenta, and uh, I've been doing that for the last two years. Um, Magenta is a Danish uh, free software company which is specializing in always uh, delivering everything to the customer under a free license. Uh, some of our developers will use proprietary software like Mac if they want to, especially the designers, but um, we'll never deliver anything to a customer unless it's under a free license. Um, we have 15 employees, about 45 customers, mainly small government organi organizations, ch charities, municipalities, the University of Copenhagen, and we develop software in Plone, Drupal, Alfresco, Django, Obvious, and program in Java, JavaScript, Python, and Perl, and PHP, and web design and stuff. Well, that covers it more or less. Um, so why are we doing this? Uh, the public libraries in Aarhus, they had a lot of uh, old PCs with Windows XP and uh, Microsoft was pulling the support. So they, uh, they thought there was no way they could run Windows 7 on these PCs and they didn't want to throw them out. So they said, why don't we go open source and uh, put Ubuntu on all these PCs? Um, so they asked us to develop BeepOS, which is a kiosk-like desktop. Uh, mainly, it does not stare, so store any user data uh, for, for their audience PCs. And uh, now to maintain all these PCs, they wanted a centralized admin system. And the, the requirement for this admin system was that it must be easy to use and it must also be easy to use for non-technical stuff because a library has a lot of non-technical stuff. Actually, they don't have any technical stuff to speak of. So uh, that was very important. Um, so we started working with them and on December, in December 2011, we delivered uh, the first version which was uh, the 1.0 Alpha based on Ubuntu 11.10 and we delivered it to them <coughs> using Canonical's landscape product as an admin system. Um, and uh, well, they liked the the landscape system. It was overloaded for them. There was too much. It has too much functionality, and they found it a bit confusing. But they could use it, and they like to use it. But uh, it's one hundred dollars per seat per year. That was too expensive for them. It destroyed the economy in their project, and it's proprietary. That means they could no longer say they had an open source solution. So it was not acceptable for them. Um, in May 2013, the libraries asked us to deliver BibOS 2.0, including a new admin system, which was to be free software. Um, so we delivered an update of the desktop kiosk system together with, an, with a new admin system, which we decided, designed and coded from scratch. And uh, basically, it's an ordinary web app, which is written in Python and using Django. And, um, well, we coded that in May, June, July, and in August we started rolling out the system. And in um, January we have finished the trial period and the testing period, and they are officially in production. Uh, now, BibOS 1.5 was a bit clutchy, rough around the edges, as you can see from the uh, improvised splash screen. Uh, but that is a uh, Clonezilla splash, splash, splash screen because the desktop is based on Clonezilla. Now, BibOS 2 is slicker and more mature, as you can see from the improved uh, and redesigned Clonezilla splash screen. Um, and they uh, have a very slick background image too for their audience PCs. Uh, and they advertise Ubuntu as free software, that's very nice too. Um, and actually, uh, this background was deployed to all their PCs using the admin system we built for them. So uh, that's nice, I think. 
so how does it all work? Um, maybe I should maybe I should just uh, show you this system for a moment if I can find the browser window. So uh, this is the admin system as it looks if you log in as a super user. And uh, you see various sites that you administer, sites for different uh, cities uh, using the system. Uh, this is a test site, uh, but actually Aarhus and another town called Silkeborg are in full production with this system. But if you enter one of these sites, you see you come in, you see a status window, you see, ah, some new computers joined. On some computer, a job has failed. Uh, there is a slot for global site configuration. You can set parameters, parameters that uh, are valid for the whole site. You can see a list of computers. Uh, you can manage the computers individually. The computers have configuration uh, parameters. Um, well. There's packages on them, and uh, I'll show you some. Well, maybe someone with... Anyway, uh, this contains the packages that, uh, that has changed from the original distribution. Uh, this ha has no additional packages, and if uh, the computer has uh, packages available for update, uh, for upgrade, uh, this slot will contain a list of those packages. Um, and then, what's important here is that you can manage these uh, computers. You can manage them by, uh, if there are packages to be upgraded, you can revise the package list and you can tell it to upgrade it. So, you, they, so uh, the computer can have the newest versions of all the packages, but uh, you can also define scripts and run them on all the computers. So I can take one script, which is here a global script, and this one is called Activate Screensaver. Um, if I look at this script, I see it has details, description, it has code, and the code is basically an executable file, normally a bash script, could also be a Python script, could also be a compiled C program. But uh, we don't do pre-reuse of binary files. But basically, it's a best script. Uh, then you can change it. You can add parameters. But this this uh, script takes no parameters. But you can also run it. And I can say I want to run this on all the computers in the adult section of this library. Uh, that is what Voxner means in Danish. Then I say next, then it says uh, specify parameters, but there are no parameters, but we have this step anyway because we want the user to think just once before pressing hit, pressing run, and then you say query, which means run. And then the script is to be run on all the PCs uh, in that group. And it is scheduled to be run on two PCs in that group because on this test side there are only two PCs in that group. Uh, but that's basically how it works. Um, The architecture is like this, that uh, if you want to attach a client to this uh, system, you install a Python package, uh, which is called BeepOS Client, and call a script called Register New BeepOS Client. And this activates a process which is called the Job Manager. And the Job Manager runs every five minutes and asks the server for instructions. So every five minutes, the Job Manager wakes and says, what are my orders? And then it, was, it uh, makes an XML RPC call over HTTPS and um, receives its orders, uh, which can be upgrade this package, uh, run this script, uh, please uh, update all your package info and send it to me. Uh, the server decides everything. Uh, and it uh, the, the job manager executes its orders and uh, tells the server how it went and sends results back. And, um, and then that's it, and then it's, uh, the job manager falls asleep for the next five minutes. And if uh, some PCs are behind a firewall, and they are in Aarhus, and that's why we handled this, uh, we can say to one of the BeepOS desktops, you are our gateway. So 
everybody can communicate with, the, with our server through this gateway. The only thing that's required is that the, that the gateway has uh, the, the gateway is allowed to speak to our server through the firewall. So an overview of the architecture is here. You have the uh, central server, and here you have a library which has a lot of desktops which are not attached, which don't go through a gateway, which speak directly to the server. Here you have uh, a library which are talking through an internal gateway, and uh, there you have uh, a library which is talking to the server through an external gateway which may be placed uh, at a third party, which may be their ISP or whatever. Um, and our principles for coding this is, uh, well, uh, to make it all we made an object-oriented analysis and we uh, made a lot of classes and we made a lot of Django classes and then we made some mockups and sent to our HTML designer and the HTML designer retaliated and sent us a lot of HTML and then a nice, lot of nice pages and then we started coding everything. Uh, so the principle is everything is free software and uh, all the admin clients are pushed to PyPy so you can download them from there or install them from there. The server source code is available on GitHub and uh, our normal development, we don't use it for normal development, but each time we take a release, we push it to GitHub. Um, and we have a coding style, uh, strict pep8. We have an automated test, which will test that all the code is pep8. Apart from that, we don't uh, bother with making automated tests because we think this is very complex and uh, it's about the user experience, as experience and we don't think the automated test proves enough to justify the expense of making them. Uh, but basically this was made uh, in three months by two developers and one user interface designer and around 500 man hours. Uh, and we identified some uh, challenges on the way. Uh, now the scripting interface and the package interface, it must be very easy for non-technical users to understand. I mean, for us developers, it's easy. We write a script, upload the script, and run the script, but um, many of our users don't really have a conception of what it means to run a script. They don't always understand the difference between running a script and installing a package, and they expect scripts to be something you can undo, like you can undo the installation of a package. So the scripting interface has to be very point and click. It must be easy for script developers to upload new, new scripts, but it must also be very easy for users to just point at this script, which says something like activate screen saver or change background image and then execute it and don't and uh, without having to understand any more than now I am pointing clicking and doing this on 100 uh, PCs and um, how do we keep the list of packages on the server always synchronized with that on the PC without drowning the server in information from the PCs um, and this should be easy it should be very easy but it has proved challenging and um, Actually, a couple of year, weeks ago, we were just about tearing our um, server down by sending too many package lists. And performance, well, which brings along, it's best if the theory is that um, normally uh, there will never be instructions for a computer, or very rarely. So uh, if there is a lot of traffic, then this scales very poorly because there's only one central server. And uh, if you have a job bug in a script, uh, please do not make the job manager crash, because if you make the job man manager crash, then the computer is lost to the admin system. And if the computer is lost to the admin system, it needs to be restored manually. And that's bad when uh, you want to have a centralized admin system. And if you do this on your home network, please note that uh, by uh, joining this server, you are giving uh, the server root access to your computer, and uh, so this is this is for organizations who logically own the computers uh, they are running. Um, and the status is, it is currently in production, 200 attached PCs, and we have two or three outstanding uh, critical bugs. 
Uh, more will be found, I think. Uh, we consider this a user-friendly and lightweight alternative to landscape or spacewalk or puppet and um, currently open only for Debian uh, systems. And we think it could be used by libraries, schools, people with server parks, hospitals, whoever have large amounts of Debian-based desktops or servers. Uh, and you can use it too if you want. Uh, you can go to GitHub. Um, you can go to GitHub. Um, uh, download the source code and there are very readable instructions which can get you started uh, in five minutes. It's, a, it's an advantage if you've worked with Django before. And uh, it's only in Danish. If you want to make an English translation, you're welcome. Contributions are welcome. Uh, and yeah, we expect to do a new phase this year. But we really don't know. We don't have any funding. We expect the libraries to fund a couple of hundred hours more this year, but uh, well, we are a company. We can't do anything without funding. We don't have too much right now, but we are, hope we are hopeful. Uh, we think it will grow slowly, but steadily. And I want to thank uh, the Danish Agency for Culture and the public libraries in Aarhus and Silkeborg for funding this and for being our customers. And any questions? Questions for Carsten, everyone? No? Yes, one at the back. Oops, give me a second. You said it's um, only in Danish currently. Uh, however, translations are welcome. Now, I don't speak any Danish. I'm not sure if other people, well, obviously Danes, but. Um, is the code itself in English and commented in English to the extent that you could, you know, translate it without actually understanding necessarily every? Yeah, I think uh, um, anybody, anybody who would like, anybody who would want to volunteer a translation would have to figure out what all the user user interface tags are doing, or Google Translate them, or, or look them up in the dictionary. But I think um, I don't think that's too hard. The code is in Danish and is in English and all the all comments in the code are in English and the the, the developer the documentation on GitHub is in English. Any other questions for Carsten? No? Nope. Okay, fantastic. Once again if you have any questions please um chase them up at the front of the room now or outside just after, uh, after the talk. It was was Carsten Nagger, everyone. Thank you for your talk. Oh you could email me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And the next talk will start at 11.